So, good morning. Just, uh, I've been at the desk, <clears throat> I've been at my tying bench for a couple hours, just tying um, regular roundhead jigs, uh, nothing fancy, uh, just filling my inventory boxes. It is mid-January, um, we're expecting that really cold snap. Um, Sometime this weekend, I guess it'll start. It feels like springtime right now. The weather has been awful in regard to ice fishing season. Um, I, I even recently sent um, some bucktails up north because guys were still fishing in the rivers uh, with bucktails. Why does that camera do that? Busy? You are not busy. How did I fix this before? Well, let's see if that works. I know with this camera, I have to hit record. Um, and if I leave it on, I think what happens is the card, the SD card probably gets filled up and it freaks out for a minute. And I can check this monitor and have the record button off and it still works through my my mixing board so I don't I don't quite understand why that happens most of the time I don't have a problem with this camera but here we are at the t at the bench and um, like we said I'm tying just very simple doing some uh, fire tiger jigs right now just on a regular round ball head um, tying one quarter so let's switch over turn on my face um, and we're doing almost live so as you could see that beginning that intro <laughs> we are I'm not gonna cut any of the the mistakes out and I'm just tying with the cameras on so let's see it's about 10 o'clock 10 a.m. as we're tying. Um, it's Saturday morning. And like I said, we're expecting to get that uh, cold snap. Um, but this video will probably be scheduled to air uh, end of February, maybe early March. And right now we're in the middle of January. So... Um, the thread I'm using today is a good broad uh, two aught thread, which I don't use all that often. I don't have a whole lot of it, and uh, it's almost impossible to find at this point. I will be, I don't know exactly when, I don't have a regular schedule of what I'm going to record and when necessarily um, my work my work schedule is still a little goofy so um, you know I, I don't plan things out so uh, strictly but I will be doing some video and talking about thread I'll uh, probably go online try to order a bunch of different types of thread, uh, what I would use and why, alternatives to use. Um, you know, I like using size A rod wrapping thread 
for jigs one quarter or larger and two watt rod wrapping thread just a plain round nylon unwaxed for Uh, jigs that are smaller but straight unwaxed round nylon is is becoming harder and harder to find which is a shame um, and I'm not exactly sure why some of it I think is we're buying most of our materials from dedicated fly shops and one the shops the fly shops want to sell things so of course they're going to show a jig tire all these fancy threads and tinsels and you know just to sell different materials and we just you know we're, we we lose the habit um, you know we we become accustomed to the new threads and whatnot and I think that's Part of the reason why um, the nylon thread kind of went to the wayside, we become more sophisticated and then we lose some of that basic original way of doing things. So you know, my thought is I'll go on, I'll go online, I'll go to a, you know, I'll take a drive down to Ross, Roscoe and Livingston Manor and, you know, I'll buy a handful of threads. We'll talk about uh, the reasons why I would pick them for jigs versus flies um, or only pick them to use for flies only. And... Just making sure that everything's on. Um, and maybe have a discussion about that. Um, I, I think it's probably about due. There's a handful of really good tires online. Um, that swear by some of these fly tying threads. And, uh, you know, so we'll tie some jigs. We'll, we'll talk about, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Just adding a few extra wraps on this. I had a, some of that chartreuse hair just poking out where it shouldn't be. Um... What I'm tying today, and I, we haven't, I haven't said anything about it, um, is just a fire tiger. I'm tying on a ball head that is uh, one quarter, and I'm using the two watt thread because tying the fire tiger, being a three. Uh, color tail using the size A thread uh, it tends to bulk up and even I struggle a little bit occasionally um, if I haven't tied them in a while in keeping my my uh, wraps nice and neat and um, keeping the thread from bulking too much So dropping down to a, a, a thinner diameter thread allows me to do those these three colors without the collar getting so thick and heavy and kind of throwing off the proportion of um, the proportions I like to see in a jig. So we have our two watt nylon thread, unwaxed, and this fire tiger, it's a pattern I've tied before. Uh, it's, a, it's a hot pattern, it's, it's, 
kind of a perch um, a perch type a perch style pattern but it's uh, chartreuse yellow and orange I like to use the purple thread for the collar and then use purple sharpie for the stripes and the choice of the brown head I think originally uh, because I've seen these with purple heads I've seen them with black heads uh, but I, I chose brown just to make it a little bit different than the typical perch pattern which is the black yellow and orange and I also think to you know choosing the purple thread and the purple stripes again just to make it a little bit different than that perch pattern there's another uh, I think originally the uh, customer I tied it for, he referred to it as a fire tiger, but it, it wasn't a fire tiger. But it's a jig that I've kept on my rack. This has probably been hanging here 10 years. We'll take a good look at this in just a second. Um, at least 10 years. There's a coating of dust on the head of this jig because it's just been hanging on my spinning rack for so long. I do like this color combination and I've, I keep a few in my box myself and uh, I fish it in a lot of the different lakes and rivers here locally. Um, but it was never, you know, and maybe and I don't know, I don't know the histories on, on how some of these patterns evolve. Fire Tiger, I believe people were just copying a Rapala and, and using hair to tie a jig that would match a hot Rapala at the time, you know, what, what the hot color was at the time. Um, And, and perhaps this was originally a, a fire tiger. Maybe it was tied that way in a, at a time. Um, this color combination, rather. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe the guy just, you know, he tried to remember what the pattern was supposed to be. And he wasn't 100% accurate. I don't know. But it's a, it's a neat looking pattern regardless. Um, and also, it, it could have, um, influenced me on using the purple thread because this uses a purple, a purple thread as well. So let's finish this one up real quick. So this is a pattern I'm thinking about, or talking about. Turn my face off. And you can see how dusty this head is. There's dust in the threads. There's dust on this top uh, wing. But it's a green chartreuse with white over an orange belly purple thread on a black head and it does look like I did use a purple sharpie for the stripes uh, really neat color combination don't know if it shows up how it shows up uh, on the video on the monitor it looks a little dull 
Um, you can go with a little bit darker green chartreuse. But really neat um, pattern. And like I said, I keep a few of these in my tackle box. And, uh, you know, kind of mix it up. When, when you're fishing walleye and the perch jigs are doing great, you know, do go ahead, use Fire Tiger. Go ahead, use this other pattern. Um, they're, they're all, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? When you tie a, holy cow, if you can think of the word I'm thinking of, put that down in the comments down below. Um, when, you, when you're tying a fly and you change the material up a little bit, what is that called? <laughs> oh no, I think I'm losing my mind. I want to say alternative, but that's not the that's not the right word. It's when you when you put your own twist on a on a pattern, and it would be unethical. It would be I don't know, not a big enough change, so it's almost a copyright infringement. Um, but you put your your twist on it, and it would be foolish to to name it, give it your own name, or say that you invented it. Oh my goodness! So these videos are unscripted. Like I said, I just I just turned the cameras on while I was tying. I'd be sitting here talking to nobody. At least this way I'm talking to you, right? A little surprise this morning. I was expecting the weather to be quite cold. We we're supposed to get that Arctic uh, that Arctic air coming down. That's coming down from Canada, doing a loop around and coming up into New York State. I'm not seeing it, not yet. We might we might be on the edge. I know uh, Western New York State will probably be hit with snow and in the bitter bitter cold but it's been an awfully strange winter this year you know we're we're in the middle of January today's the uh, 13th and we still don't have ice Um, I didn't even plan a, a ice fishing trip. Usually, a, a myself and a good buddy of mine uh, for the um, extended weekend, uh, Martin Luther King weekend. We usually rent a, a cabin somewhere, a cottage, and uh, we'll fish. We, we've driven up to uh, Lake Simcoe a few years previous to COVID. Look at that, did it again, and I'm not recording. Why does it do that? Turn off my face so you don't have to watch that. Very strange, it goes from the um, being on video to switching over to camera mode and doing a burst. Maybe it's, um, I'll have to look. I'll have to look. 
Maybe it's uh, a voice command. Maybe I'm saying something. And it's switching over to camera and doing a burst of photos. I don't know. If I keep having problems with this GoPro over here, uh, I'll just get another Canon. Uh, what are we using? We're using the um, M3. I have an old M3, which is my primary uh, camera, but it's perfect uh, for doing this type of work, you know, YouTube videos and whatnot. I know there's newer cameras. The M3 is probably seven or eight years old at least, right? Um, but it's I, I love this camera. It's a fantastic camera. Um, and it would not bother me one bit to have a second one for my, you know, my face-to-face, -face, so... That might be a nice addition. I'll have to consider that for 2024. Though I can't complain with the... Mainly I use GoPro uh, 7 Black is my main. I have two of them set up here. Uh, plus I have two more that I use, one for the kayak and one was my original. It was a Christmas gift one year, right before the 8 came out. Um, but I got a 7 silver. And uh, it was perfect for recording videos. If you go back a few years through my video collection some of those very very early videos were made with a oh I don't remember the model it was a very inexpensive Sony camcorder very cheap I bought it to uh, record both of my daughters who played uh, soccer in high school, I was recording their games. I was, re you know, making little videos, you know, when they scored goals and whatnot. Uh, carried it along when they went into uh, and both played for the colleges that they attended. And it was fun. It was a, you know, a little, it was a fun little hobby. And I probably made... I don't know, six to six to twelve jig tying videos. And one of my very most popular videos, surprisingly, um, using that plain, cheap little camcorder, doing the editing in uh, Windows Movie Maker, you know, really low budget, low. <laughs> um, you know, it, it was it was very low quality, but it, it was they were decent videos. Really was a good camcorder, um, and I think the thing that made me want to get something a little bit better was the autofocus. You could hear it, and uh, you know Christmas was coming along and. I think, I'm not sure if my wife thought I was really serious and like this was going to be a thing. So instead of getting the Hero uh, 8 Black or even a 7 Black because they were still a little expensive, she bought me the silver. You know, it, it, you know if I had it just to take pictures and a couple little videos and never did it again, then it wouldn't have been a big deal. You know, it wouldn't have been a terrible waste of money, even though it was a gift. Um, but yeah, the rest is history. I, some of my, that, that seven silver, I have to admit, is an outstanding 
camera um, in terms of picture quality, um, video quality, but also if you're taking pictures. So some of those early videos were What is this doing? This camera probably hears me talking some crap about it. But that was the first Hero Black that I purchased after playing with that silver for so long. And I still use my 7 Silver um, hiking and, you know, it's nice to have the, um, you know, be able to use external microphones and whatnot. But really, when it all comes down to it, when you're out in the elements, when you're out hiking and fishing and kayaking and doing those types of things, uh it, sometimes it's better not to have all that extra technology. Um, I lost a, a 7 Black. Had everything set up. Turned the camera on. Stuck the microphone in it. Uh, the external battery. I like using the... Um, These anchor batteries, these are the 10,000. I think this one's a 10,000. Uh, a 10,000 anchor battery. This one is with the single. I do have a couple that have the, um, I, can, I can run two lines off of it. But had it all set up, I was going to clip it on my vest, but I hadn't zipped up my, my life vest yet my life jacket so i set it on the seat of my kayak um, i run the uh, sidekick wheels on my slayer max so i went to one side of the kayak kind of lifted it up took the took the wheel and folded it into place Walked around to the other side, you know, set it down. So now the kayak has a is really leaning to one side. And my camera with the battery just kind of rolled off the seat into the water. Now, if I had my silver, I wouldn't have had anything attached to it. No external battery, no... Uh, microphone or anything like that so it probably would have survived a dunk for a few seconds or minute into the water but the eight uh, seven black with the side door open so you could have the microphone and the external battery hooked up it was toast uh, surprisingly and that's why this battery has the X on it. This is the battery that got dunked. The anchor battery works 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 fine. And that was, I think, two years ago. Uh, at least two seasons ago. Um, two summers. It was the... I don't think it was the Maiden Voyage, but it was very close to the Maiden Voyage. And it was the kayak video where I was... Uh, after uh, being out on the lake all day and um, the lines on my rudder were completely taut in the morning but when I got back at the end of the day and they were super loose so uh, whatever video that one was might have been the video with the um, new bass rod and first fish on that. So, how long have we been tying here? About a half hour. 
going a little slow. What do we got? A half a dozen of these tied in a half hour. That's a little slow. But we're talking. Have a video coming up. It's been scheduled to air. Uh, the first video in the the first video in the it might be me saying V I D E O. Um, in the basic jig tying uh, idea that I had um, to kind of focus on some of the very basic things. So uh, the first video for that will come out and it's just locking on thread, a little bit of discussion on bobbins and um, the thread to use. But very basic conversation on locking on your thread and the idea is um, like I mentioned a few videos ago to um, kind of sprinkle these in our regular uh, videos you know in between regular tying videos and and these almost live type videos just to focus on some of that basic stuff there are a couple uh, groups that use the videos for um, instruction. Um, I think one of them is a Boy Scout troop, uh, which which I think is really cool, and uh, really happy to you know, I'm honored to hear that people are using them for that. Um, so my thought is is that if I do these, you know, talk about thread, talk about using your bobbin, talk about you know, locking on the hair, et cetera, et cetera. That if you take these videos once there's a collection of, let's say, six, that you could string them together and really um, go from start to finish and in, in, um, building a jig. Um, and if, that's, if, if that helps uh, people, I think that's fantastic. Um, and we'll see. We'll see what the response is for that type of um, video. But we'll still do our regular, regular tying and our almost lives. And I lost my thread. So now that we're into January, over the next few weeks, all December, I've been casting and painting uh, the Barumba heads, uh, typically, you know, walleye jigs, one half, uh, three eighths, five eighths. Um, been casting a lot of the larger ball head jigs, a lot of the larger flat head jigs. So the videos. Um, that I, I will have coming up will uh, feature those walleye style jigs, pike jigs, etc. And this is the season where you know I tie January, February, March, getting ready for the springtime sales uh, for the opening season. Um, I might, um, there might be a couple videos uh, because I'm also filling the boxes for, uh, what do we got, the um, bucktail streamers. Um, I want to do more for the river fishing, right, kind of um, continuing the idea in some of those videos we did this past summer on the uh, Wolf River uh, rigs, that, that style um, walleye streamer, um, but also, who's blowing up the phone? But also uh, tying up some uh, traditional Catskill uh, style streamers uh, just to replenish my collection and the inventory. 
um, because I do sell I do sell streamers here locally as well as um, you know I, I kind of make a circuit um, sell a little bit down in the Catskills um, sell in the central New York area all the way up uh, Syracuse on Ida Lake um, and then there's a, a shop or two up in Oswego so um, that keeps me the 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 most busy um, central New York Syracuse on Ida Lake um, we got a few lakes here locally lakes and rivers um, and shops um, kind of going off on different different topics um, but I, I think that's going to do it for us today we've uh, had a little over half hour I'm going to finish up uh, these ball head jigs and then like I said we're going to start getting into some of those walleye jigs um, if you have any ideas if you're watching, you have any ideas, you just want to see turning the cameras on when we're doing it and talking super informally, or um, if you have any topic ideas where you want to see a little bit more focus, maybe some ideas on the very basic techniques on how to lock on a specific material, what material to use versus another for a specific type of jig, something like that. Put those comments down below, um, but I think that's going to do it for us today. As always, hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any new content. Check out the website, jworthhandtied.com. Again, still trying to, as I'm tying uh, to fill the inventory boxes for my springtime sales, always I'm trying to do a dozen or so extra of everything that I do just so I can put it on the website. So that will be updated um, fairly regular, especially as we get closer to uh, springtime. I think that's going to do it. So until next time, guys, keep tying tie lines.